Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And soon we're jumping over to an opposition preview with Chris from Gallowgate Sharks talking the Man City uh, away trip to Newcastle. It's going to be a fascinating game. Uh, and I've already recorded the interview actually with Chris. He was in top form, really, really good. And uh, before I do that though, I want to talk about the latest episode of the playlist from AAA Sport. So we'll jump over to that now, watch the latest clip, and I'll give you my thoughts on it after it's over. Is Zinchenko going to be the difference of Arsenal getting top four or will Charleston over the course of a season be a difference that of Spurs? Experience. I think, that I, so experience. I, you know what, Abby? Do you know what? Zinchenko. I actually think he could be. Yeah, so do I. Not to the level of a Charleston. You know what? You know what? They've already got, they got top four. That. Charleston. Charleston kept Everton up last year. He scored six. Hold on. No, no, hold on. Hold on. No. They, let's have this right. Tottenham just got top four without this guy. Yeah, but it's going to be harder this year. It will be harder this year. Everyone is struggling. Arsenal last season, when Kieran Tierney was out, they played Nuno they Tavares. No and then they played Xhaka. They played Xhaka. They played Xhaka. Now they've got a reliable Zinchenko. left wing for the whole season. For the whole season, you've got a guaranteed... Versus the time. guy that's just going to come in when, when Kulusevski might get a bit tired. No, but it's about the games where you need something extra. You've got someone that's quality. Yeah, the other option. And, and, yeah, and yeah, bring yeah, someone yeah, off yeah. the bench that can yeah. offer something different rather than someone... What Richarlison will do for Tottenham? What, what, what Richarlison will do that's for Tottenham? That's why this is close. Between I'll, tell, I'll, tell, close. I'll, tell, I'll tell you, close. I'll tell you yeah. what Richarlison will do for Tottenham. Richarlison will turn defeats into draws and draws into wins. Agreed. That is what he will do for Tottenham. But you've, gone and a you've gone too far. You've gone too far. He will. You've gone too far. Richarlison is well capable. You bring Richarlison on with 15 minutes to go and you're drawing nil-nil. Nick a winner. Five subs now. Well capable of doing that. <laughs> Look, Zinni is so underappreciated. Yes, actually. Absolutely, yes. Zinchenko can turn uh, defeats into draws or draws into victories. He literally came on on the last day of the Premier League season and essentially, alongside Gundogan, single-handedly turned the momentum again game round, got a huge assist. Uh, his energy, his drive, his leadership, massive. I think it's genuinely fair to say City do not win the league that day without Zinchenko. Genuinely that true. Charles is going to be a good player for them, but I don't think he's going to get as much game time as they think because Kulazeski, uh, Son, Harry Kane, they're better. And I think, uh, honestly, I don't think he'll play anywhere near as much. He's a good player, don't get me wrong. He's a good squad signing, but Zinchenko has come in to show leadership and a winning mentality. For me, he is a more important signing. He really is uh, an absolute crucial one and a huge one for Arsenal. He'll provide a little bit of experience. He's, he's a captain as well for Ukraine, don't forget. He has, uh, so much composure, a wonderful footballer and a wonderful man. And that stuff is absolutely important when you're trying to build a team who knows how to win. Zinchenko, for me, absolutely a better signing and a more important signing in my opinion then Richarlison for Spurs go over to the uh, episode uh, there'll be a link in the description below the latest episode of the playlist let him know uh, give him a bit of zinny love down there and of course let him know the most important signing this one was actually early in Carlin. it was it really was we all know that but they're talking about other players I'll give him that for now though go over there check it out and of course uh, let me know let him know that I sent you as well it's all good anyway let's go over to the chat with Chris from Gallagher Shots where we talk all things Newcastle ahead of the big trip to St James's Park for Man City Hey guys and welcome back to another video of course Man City head to St James's Park this weekend for El Cashico or whatever people are calling it these days either way it's going to be a very big <laughs> game of football and had to get the opposition view so uh, Chris has joined me from Gallagate, uh, Gallagate Shots on his lunch break Chris you're an absolute superstar thanks so much man I really do appreciate it how you doing you good? I'm not bad mate um, I'm, I'm glad to join you today to, to finally have a little bit of optimism when it comes to speaking to, to Newcastle United because it's, <laughs> it's been a while since I've, I've got the chance to speak so highly of the football club, mate. It's, it's you're in about 2009 where City were now, basically. You know, mm. like, that's like a long time ago now for us City fans, and obviously it's become the norm. But I still remember that giddiness, you know. I, obviously, there's always yeah. a noise around it, you know. We didn't have that noise around it about all the various issues because it, it was social media wasn't a thing and no one really cared about then, to mm. be honest. But you've gone through it all um, on the front line and so on. And, and I'm sure, just like me, you you just kind of want to watch your team play good football and enjoy, and enjoy it all, you know. Like, I, we won't go into all that stuff because it's it's kind of tiring of people. I'm sure you're bored of talking at all. I just want to talk about the yeah. game, man. I want to talk about how you're feeling about Newcastle United and how you're feeling about the game and what you're looking forward to and so on. And uh, I guess we'll start with the starting point, really. Um, your season preparations and um, how, how have they gone for Newcastle in terms of signings and so on? And how are you feeling ahead of the season? So, so signings wise, I think most Newcastle fans saw what happened the last half of last season and the club outperformed, of course they did. We were destined for relegation, then Eddie Howe came in after the takeover, the new rivals came in and it just propelled to a different level. Yeah. Um, but going into this season, I think some of the weak areas, which not necessarily weak areas, but areas which needed uh, backup and basically bums on seats when it comes to impact players was our striking options, um, attacking players. Something which we haven't yet invested in in the summer. And not for the lack of trying, 
It's just the fact that we can't get those deals done at this moment in time. Um, we've looked at defence. We brought Matt Target in as a permanent sign and had a fantastic time last season when he was on loan from Villa. A very underrated player, in my opinion. Um, but we brought Nick Pope in. That came out of the blue. A- an area which I thought was probably our strongest place with Martin Dubravka <laughs> between the sticks. But we brought a, an England in, international in and he's, he's had a great start to the season. He really has. But then being AC Milan to bring in Sven Botman as well um, highly regarded across football as well so uh, hopefully a very good sign we haven't seen much of him yet he did start against Brighton um, but pre-season we didn't see a huge amount from him um, but yeah fingers crossed mate it's, it's looking good it's, look, it's looking rosy at the moment for at Newcastle it really is man is it fair to say as well from the outside looking in you've got a relatively settled 11 I was looking at the teams that you played against Forest and Brighton and other than the defensive changes that front six was exactly the same wasn't it you know Willick, Bruno and uh, Joe Linton in the field and then Almiron yeah. St. Maximin and Wilson is that is that a fair observation is it pretty much your 11 if everyone's fit is sort of kind of predictable not a bad way, it's, but... it's, pro- it's probably impacted because of the injury to John Joe Shelby yeah, because yeah. he was in the centre midfield ahead of Joe Willock um, so so that hasn't helped things but Joe Willock's had, had a decent start to the season um, but yeah it just goes back to, to what I was saying that the lack of forward players that's that's basically a forced start in 11 when it comes to the attack on players you back up to Callum Wilson is Chris Wood he had an impact last season but he's, he's not going to spend long at this nah, football club, in my opinion. Yeah, he was he was a panic buy last season, and it worked. It worked for Newcastle. So no matter how much people criticise how much we paid for Chris Wood, it worked for Newcastle. We stayed up. Burnley didn't. Um, but then left hand side, St. Maximum walks into the team. He's a type of player that you just can't drop. And you mentioned Miguel Miron there. Jack Grealish is <laughs> big <laughs> yeah, fan of him, my apparently. <laughs> Cheers, Jack, for the unnecessary uh, needle. You know, if you need any more motivation, I know. fuck's sake. I know. Do you know what it is? Miguel Miron's the, the happiest, nicest bloke that you can ever meet. He's always got a smile on his face. And of all the players... Do you know what yeah, I think it was? It. I think his Grealish like does that to everyone. Like I think he just he winds mm. everyone up. What I can tell, like he seems really popular yeah. around the dressing room. And I think he's done that kind of saying the quiet thing out loud when he was drunk thing, where he's like, yeah. he probably watched like Newcastle one day with the guys, you know, on the TV, and Elmira might have just missed the pass or whatever, and he's gone, yeah. and then he's just gone. He's made the connection. He's had like a fucking idiot. <laughs> I've gone and done that publicly. <laughs> it's, but fine, like, it's, it's fine for us to say that as, as Newcastle fans. We don't like it when other people say it about. Oh yeah, Rock. of course. I mean, I think it's ultimately like I don't. It's, it's going to kind of ultimately harmless, but he's, yeah, Jack, I think he's is. not used to Jack Grealish being in a goldfish bowl at Man City. You know, mm. I mean? where everyone, every word you say is he's got. Especially with City producing so much content, and it was live at the time as well. Like, yeah, I don't it was. Know, you know, like, um, Miron looking forward to the game, aren't he? You know. Yeah, I think there's rumours that there might be a little display for Miguel Miron as well. Right. So, wow! As you're aware, St James Park at the moment, it's if you look across Premier League football, I'll probably say it's the best in regards to displays and atmospheres yeah. at this moment in time. Every single match day, there's something happening in the ground, thanks to to the guys at War Flags who who prep every single match day with displays. We saw it at the end of last season against. Arsenal, the, one of the greatest things I've ever seen, to be fair, and that was, wasn't was just the match itself. Um, so I think there might be a little display about Elmiron, but that's probably on the back of what Grealish was saying. You, you do realise, like, no, I don't mean to patronise, but City fans forgot about that after five minutes. Like, I guess, I guess, I know. like it's one of those things where we're like, oh, that's kind of funny. But then obviously you forget that like, the other side, the other fans are like, what the fuck just happened? Oh, like, we, like, we'll never forget this. Yeah, never yeah. forget it. Well, I'll tell you that. It's funny, isn't it? Like, like he, I, 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 I don't think Grealish even remembered. Like, he was no, smart. He doesn't. I, I was I it was day. mentioned afterwards honestly I was there that day um, I was working with City that day I was on one of the tour buses with the fans doing presenting for City and like I saw Jack and he was beyond hammered like I saw like, his neck and bladdered. shots and shots, and shots. Yeah. Like, oh, he was loving it having a time was like good on him is what I will say but you know <laughs> I, I like to think that they all know each other and he's reached out to Armour mm. afterwards and gone like Sorry, pal. Maybe yeah. not. Who knows? Either way, we'll see. And he'll probably have a good game. And how are you feeling about um, Newcastle's actual start to the season? Obviously, a good victory against Forest, um, two 0 mm-hmm. Brighton was a different. It was a different game. Like um, on the outside looking in, I did see the highlights. A lot of Brighton were the better team, personally to me. Yeah, hundred um, percent. And how did you feel about those two games? So I think it gave the first game against Forest. It gave us a false sense of where we were as a football club because Forest were very, very bad yeah. that opening game of the season. Newcastle just steamrolled them. Yeah, dominated. You were over it should have been you? oh, it should have been a lot more than two nil. Um, I think we had twenty odd shots at goal. To be honest with you, so if it wasn't for the Almiron once again not finishing his chances, <laughs> <laughs> we would have scored a lot more. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> he was. Um, but like, I'm allowed to say that. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. <laughs> then you yeah, go into the Brighton He may be a wasteful game. thingy, but he's our wasteful striker. He's ours. Yeah, exactly, he's yeah. ours. Yeah. You go into the Brighton game and Brighton are, are a lot better team. Um, the massively underrated that Brighton side really is. Um, the first 20 minutes was pretty even, but as the time went on, Brighton came into it and they just completely bombarded our goal, to be fair. But... Yet to concede, uh, same as City as well. So, so yeah. it's the only two Premier League teams which are, are yet to concede a goal. Um, then obviously we're going head to head on Sunday, but uh, it's been a decent start. It really has, especially when you look at this time last year. It, it took us to fourteen games before we got a win under our belt. So yeah, it's it, it's looking well. I'm not getting carried away because things can change so quickly in the Premier League. Um, you're only one injury away from absolute downfall at uh, the best of times. So. Yeah, it's looking good. It's looking good. Yeah, definitely. And look at Liverpool, man. Who predicted them would be having the start of the season they've got, you know? And mm. I was going to say, look at who predicted that United, but everyone did actually. So, so yeah, like, exactly. Of course, yeah, so yeah. of course, yeah, obviously. But like, you know, you're absolutely right. And it's, it's weird because I don't think with Newcastle yet, even you probably a minute as well. You can't really, you don't really know where they are yet, do you? Because it's like mm. we're going to have to see how the game settles for them. Like, there's certain mm. teams where, like you're right, Brighton, they know who they are. They've got such identity yeah. and they've been doing it for years under Potter now. And obviously, certain teams are more settled. And Newcastle is such a state of flux, aren't they? Constantly changing. Mm. And in your eyes, I guess, hopefully changing even more that it's just you don't really know what's going to happen. Is there any more rumours, by the way, any more signings before the window shut? Or is it going to be just pretty much what you've got right now? Um, it's Pedro, I think he's the Watford side uh, player. Um, yeah, yeah. Looks like we're, we're in negotiation now. I think this morning we'll put a third bid in for him. Um, it's the money, in it? It's difficult. People, it, it's one of those things. Company, it's, don't they? It's, it's Newcastle United being the, the, the richest club in the world, as everyone likes to call us now. It, it's Yes, you might have money uh, in, the, in the bank, but just struggling to spend it in certain positions. And the club, apparently the club of their... their role model now is, is basically um, and business model sorry is we value a player at this amount we're not going to go over that we're, yeah. we're not going to have what, what eyes ripped out which to me maybe that's something which yes in the future you can stick by but where it's we are right now it. maybe we'll have to spend that little bit more to bring some quality players in then obviously change that business model but we'll see I, I think we're definitely desperate for another striker it's we've only got two it? at the club it's really tough we've got because... two at the club as you were saying, like people, like you know, you have to have that model. But at the same time, people, are, clubs, other clubs, have just got a bit of money as well. They can just go, well, mm-hmm. that's not our problem if you have that yeah. fee. Because look, we we had it in the in the summer. Uh, City obviously were wadded, but we had it with Cucurella where we said, like, we're going for high as forty, and they what well, they ended up with sixty three million from Chelsea. You know, like, mm. it's crazy. And City now can do that, but for years we didn't. You know, we spent a lot to get where we needed to be, and then obviously the, yeah. the drawbridge was pulled up, so we had to sort of change it a little bit, but. Yeah, it's tough, isn't it? When you got that money, people resume things are going to be easy, but it's just hard to spend it because a twenty million pound player becomes a fifty one in the eyes of everyone else, and you're like, literally that that much of a leap. Like you go, oh, we'll go for this guy. If like, if, if I don't know, if um, if Brighton went for a full back, they'd be like fifteen million. If if, if Newcastle mm. or City go for him, it's like forty five, please. And it's the, the the trouble which I have as well on on like the likes of City and Chelsea is the fact that when we've had our takeover, we can't just go and spend as much as what we want. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think when you've got your takeover, I think you are aware that things were changing soon. We had about but two still years, got that two three years yeah. to, to, to. We haven't got the back now in regards to sponsorship and, and income in the football club because everything was sports direct beforehand. Everything <laughs> associated with Newcastle United was Mike Ashley's business, whether that be sports direct, funnels, whatever it may have been. So now we're starting at the very bottom and we're having to bring these these sponsorships in, which are being scrutinised by the Premier League at the, the same time about how much they're spending and paying for the sponsorship opportunities. So I think a lot of, not Newcastle fans, but, but fans of the other football clubs need to take this takeover with a bit of a pinch of salt and think, yes, they're not going to go on to do what Man City have done. They're not going to do what Chelsea have done in such a small time frame. Maybe 10 years' time, it might be different. But I, I thought, I we'll thought just need to be right. a solid Premier League team now. No, I agree. I mean, I remember when the takeover happened and a few people disagreed with me on Twitter, but I remember saying it's going to take them a while because it's just not mm. easy to do. It's not because you can't just like, look, 150 million doesn't get you much in these days. <laughs> Sounds crazy, yeah. but it doesn't. It, get, it gets you probably two two or three Champions mm. League quality players, and but then you have to get them, you know, because then yeah. Chelsea want them, Arsenal want them, City want them, Bar- Barsley. Like, it's just hard, you know, like like maybe a few years back, you know, if 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 all like City and Chelsea have money, maybe you'd be the one signing people like Casemiro instead, you know, but you know, you're yeah. not, you're still thrashing around looking for players and stuff, you know, and it's it's just hard for you guys, but you know, you're still doing well, you still got a good team and mm. that does bring you to a test, uh, the City drawing, uh, driving into the St. James's Park. How are you feeling about this game? Uh, in isolation for this one 
you can never be optimistic going in against, <laughs> against Manchester City. No matter, even if he was already bad run of form, which which I don't think he's ever have been <laughs> recent Not for years, a while. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you, you can't look at that City game and think, oh, well, you might look at it and go, yeah, we'll we'll give them a game, but I'll be very shocked to see any sort of Newcastle United fan give Newcastle three points on Sunday. Um, I think what we need to do is learn from mistakes of previous years uh, and not concede a lot of goals because of something which we'll have <laughs> tend to do against Manchester City. It's a big mistake um, to make usually, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. It's, it's once you get that, that I think if we don't concede early, and I know it's a lot of fans say this, but if we, we don't concede in the, in the first 10, 15 minutes, then that's fine. Yeah. We'll let the game calm down, then, then go from there. My worry is that early goal. Who gets that early goal? Yeah. If, if it's City, then I'm thinking, this this could be a whitewash this it really could be no matter how good our defenders are no, City have, have always got that chance to, to absolutely murder any sort of opposition yeah that's fair that's fair and just, you, you, the first goal is crucial I, I'm not like obviously mm. I, I think the City are going to win but I don't think it's going to be easy I don't I just don't yeah. my preview now and I'm expecting Newcastle to be you know intense I'm expecting you to be really mm. up for it and uh, uh, people like Joel Linton will come live in this kind of game won't they it's going to be he'll be, uh, he'll be all over the place you know and obviously you've got he, he got sent off in pre-season mate he comes alive in every single game exactly yeah that's a pre-season <laughs> sent off is a special kind of thing to do I love it um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think he'll be up. I think he's the kind of thing he could ruffle a few feathers in there. Obviously, mm. he's got quality and we're used to it. But look, that first goal, you get it. St. James Park rocking. Like, this is. I'm, I've been looking at this in the calendar since the fixtures were announced. Thinking, this is going to be a tough game. Obviously, West Ham away mm. for us was tough on the first day of the season. But yeah. they weren't quite ready. So it wasn't West Ham away yet. You know, it was West Ham nearly away, you know. Yeah. But this is. A, you guys are ready for this now. You've had a couple of games that one game went great, one game more difficult. Mm-hmm. You know, this is going to be the one in the middle where you like you've 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 had the joy of the win and the, the frustration mm. of Brighton. Like, you, you obviously, I do think that you want to win, but you should be. I don't know. You you got something there. You know, something to potentially. I think what will help us is that that home atmosphere. Yeah. I, I think it will. Um, we, we saw how much City, uh, Arsenal crumbled that last game of, of last season, and they they were basically fighting for that fourth place at that point, and yeah. they just couldn't cope with. with the, the press of Newcastle United and how loud it was in St James's Park they just couldn't handle that um, I would have preferred it the first game of the season coming up against Manchester City because <laughs> the atmosphere first game of the season is yeah. always through the roof it really is but I, I think a lot of City fans coming into St James's Park will see a huge change in regards to the dynamics and, and the, the atmosphere and the fan base inside the ground because we're not turning on the team that we used to do previously yeah. if there was a bad pass you don't hear that that 50,000 people all sigh at the same time. You don't yeah, have that. Course, yeah, yeah. It's it's pushing that team on. It was toxic, and, wasn't it? Oh, it was horrible. It was horrible at times, mate. I'd, like, it was horrible to sit there and, and listen to it. And, and because we, we saw what was going on at the football club, we didn't want to necessarily blame the players because it's not the players' fault that they're getting these extended contracts and so on and they, they're getting <laughs> being brought in when they're not good enough. But that's the only chance that we got to, to showcase our feelings. Yeah, of course, um, yeah completely different now we'll showcase my feelings in a completely different dynamic so atmosphere on, on Sunday it'll be once again it'll be through the roof it really will be I, I, I won't ask you to predict the score I don't think it's really fair because it's like once oh I'll years. predict the score mate go I'll on, give, I'll give on, you two. I, I, I don't want I don't because I don't obviously like you <laughs> yeah go for it actually what did you, what did you, what did you, I'll give what you did your head so, say what did your heart say so, so, so my heart says at best a draw one one draw and, okay. and you know, snap your hand off that now yeah of course yeah but I th- I think these are just way too good. Um, at this moment in time, can't compete with you on the field. Um, so I'm going to go for a Man City 3-1 win. I think it'll be actually. close. I think it will be close up until a certain point, then the quality will show through after the, the 60th, 70th minute and you'll just That's away. what happened as well, even towards the end of the season. I know we won 5-0, mm-hmm. but it was a lot closer than until then. It was, it was the last half an hour for, like, that we ran away with the game a little bit and yeah. you know, really put the gloss on the scoreline. And I think you're right. I think it will be difficult and I think that's probably I think most people are probably predicting like a 3-1 I can see you scoring yeah. Trippier yeah. you know someone like that will cross into Callum Wilson or even Trippier himself with a free kick or lovely little Bruno through ball and Joe Almiron scores <laughs> <laughs> runs, runs, over to the, runs over to the bench, <laughs> uh, greenish t-shirt underneath. Like, who wants my name again? You know. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, but we'll see. I mean, how are you feeling about the rest of the season as well? Before we wrap up, like, what's what's Newcastle's? What, what I'm you confident. Expecting? I'm confident, and, and I, I think 
what a lot of people have to realize is like, like i mentioned before we'll have to realize where we are at this moment in time well that horrible in-between stage of being mm-hmm. what we once were and where we want to be it's a horrible in-between stage and i think a successful season for newcastle this year would be a top 10 finish but what i mean by a top 10 finish is not being involved in the relegation fight whatsoever yeah. just staying clear Clearly. of that just out of reach yeah but you've got like it's, a couple of wins away from the europa you look you're riding it kind of thing that kind of right thing, in right? that middle yeah similar yeah. how finished last season uh that that, that sort of diet in that area um oh, man, I, I want a cup run i, I, I want <laughs> oh, a trip yeah, to wembley you should be going to wembley man imagine the carabao oh. final or something like in i think late i think the football club will probably be looking at that saying Yes, a solid Premier League finish, but we wanted to at least get a Wembley. And it's, it's been so long since we've done it, mate. Um, unless we've played Spurs that season, but I don't think that counts. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, to, just to see your team challenge for, for some sort of domestic trophy. I, I never get bored of it. I know we've had it for a while now, but yeah. like, I love the Carabao Cup, man. I love it. Like, watch it like, I've had some of the best days of my life there, you know, even the Carabao mm-hmm. in the final. It's great. Like, like a, a Wembley trip at the end of February, you know, to see your team with a trophy. It's fucking mint. I'll never ever get bored of that. So yeah, I absolutely get that. And to be honest, I think that's a realistic game as well. Like, it is realistic. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, top, comfortably top 10 you know like so you're not yeah. looking down you're looking up instead of looking down which is a big difference in it because you see teams where they're 11 yeah. 12 but they're like oh we're only six points clear and you never know and or the ones where you can be eight ninth and you're like we're actually 11 points clear and we're actually- I, th- I think if, if you look at the, the end of last season and where we finished and, and we weren't far away from, from one of those, those european spots and i know if you had said that at the start of the season last season people would have thought you were absolutely ridiculous yeah so why can't we then go and do exactly the same this year without that 14 game challenge where we're yet to win <laughs> yeah. him in the first 14 so you have to look at it in points if we get more points in that season great well someone's gonna drop off someone always does you know um like who knows mm-hmm. who could be there's always a surprise where someone underachieves like you know the west haven't been excellent but who knows they might just slide well mm-hmm. this is where they can't keep up the energy and end up at ninth tenth and you know exactly. you're, not, you're yeah. neither a shambles you know who knows they, they might stay a shambles and you might be going do you know what we could get into the conference league which is mm. uh, yeah you'd love to be there like you, of course you'd be back traveling around europe and stuff like that would be fucking mint so we'll see man we'll see um and of course i'm sure we'll catch up again ahead of the next game when back at the etihad but for now guys uh chris absolute superstar man thanks for coming on uh, on your lunch break as well no i hope you've got a sandwich by the way you had some lunch you're good uh, it's waiting for us my lunch is waiting oh, for us so i'm gonna go and, and get it <laughs> Yeah, I got tuna. Tuna and rice. Oh, well, that is decent. It can't be a bit of tuna. Tuna mayo guy, personally, you know, on, on a bagel or whatever. Uh, I've <laughs> Chris, got some chili sauce or some chili oh, sauce to chili go Chili sauce or tuna? <laughs> oh, oh, try I've it. I've never had that before. That's, is that, <laughs> is that it, a mac and... No, mac and... Sorry, George. Mac and... Wow. <laughs> 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 Well, do you, I, I apologise. I, do, you, do you know why I had Mac in my head? I was like, don't say it. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what it was? It's because I was saying in my head earlier, don't say Mac him. And then, like, it literally came out there. But geez, I've just been cancelled in the North East uh, by two sets of fans. Um, that's like you calling me a scouser. I'd be fuming. But I'm like, oh, I, mean I apologise for that sincerely. But yeah, thankfully, this is at the end of the video. Most people wouldn't have got this far, so we're all right. <laughs> but cheers, Chris. Uh, go check out Gallo Gate Shots, of course. Their channel will be in the link in the description. It'll be on the end card as well, floating around their heads right now. Uh, Chris, thanks very much, mate. Uh, and enjoy the game, but not too much. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Guys, thanks very much for watching. All the like, comments, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And I'll catch you uh, for the game tomorrow, of course. Uh, it'll be fun. I'll be doing the watch long and all the usual stuff. And don't forget as well uh, to go watch my preview as well. It'll be a link on screen in a bit. See you all later. Bye-bye. <laughs>